Hello. I usually start with an unboxing, but I, I seem to have lost the unboxing videos for the Hot Tone models that I got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a boxing video and run it backwards. <laughs> Welcome people that need convenience, a multitude of things to do, explore and play at a fair value. That's what we're looking at today. We're looking at the Hot Tone, Hot Tony, Hot One, either or, Imperial, sta Imperial 2 stage. Now, before we put it there, I looked at the Imperial years ago when I had one here from Toman made a video for it, for the Tormon website, and was pretty blown away by the value and especially of the interface. It was one of the first modelers that had a touchscreen and I was like, why doesn't everyone do that? Now, sound-wise, it was all modeling-y, which is totally fine. Bang for the buck, in its price range, the Impero nailed it. And they've been developing it and developing it. So there's the now the Impero 2 stage. Obviously, there's the Impero 2 stump. There's the Impero Mini. Now, there's so many Imperos. Which one is right for you? We have a video. I'm looking at them right now where we're going to compare the stage, the stump, and the mini, and therefore also like the first generation and tell you what to buy. Right now, the first generation, which don't quite sound as good as the two, are massively cheap. I mean, really not just, you know, inexpensive, they're cheap. They're under 300 bucks and you get a modeler with a touchscreen and, and foot switches. And then when you get the mini, it's it, this big and it's 220 bucks. But that is a separate video where we just kind of look at the sounds. We look at this, we listen to the sounds, compare some presets and also functionality and in ins and outs. Right now we're looking at this, which is the um, two stage. And it is pretty impressive with its peripheral ability, meaning ins and outs, and the interface. Now, I have not fully read the manual, and I do this deliberately. Some of you are saying, he's not prepared. I do this deliberately so that you get the experience of what you would be experiencing if you had this in front of you. And honestly, after an hour or two, Without anything, you pretty much know a lot. Let's look at the layout. We have five foot switches, which you can already see. Uh, also the looper. Yes, it has a looper. It also has some drums, which you can add to the looper. Don't know if we get to that in this video, but drums built in for practice, maybe for some kind of looping gig, who knows? I mean, I see people, you know, doing like 
uh, busking and stuff with gear like this. So we have two main dials. We have a big menu one, which realistically, why would you use this? Do you see how you're like now uh, selecting which item? And then you click, and then you're there, and then you click. But why would you do this? Let me show you how you do this the other way. You click on it, and then you do this. I mean, that's why you have a touch screen. So, um, menu dial, main volume, which is always good to have, and there's a separate volume. That's why I couldn't get volume out of the XLRs. I actually called the distributor and stuff, and I was like, why? Because there's a separate volume for the XLR out and headphones. My dumb, now we're running it with quarter inch. That's what we do. Okay, figured it out. Why is it at zero when it ships? Hot on, hot one, come on, do it. Hot Tony. So, three encoders, they can't be clicked at the bottom and they're your fast parameters. So there's amp gain right now, delay mix and reverb mix. Obviously you can put, look at this. I have not read a manual, anything on this. So it says parameter one, two, three on the left. So parameter one, I can say uh, right now is on Fryman B. Let's stay there. But instead of gain, which it is, we're going to do master. And we're going to go back. And that's how, and now it's amp master. And that's how quickly you assigned your three favorite parameters. I've never done this before, but... It's just intuitive. It has all the things that are in the preset, all the parameters, which I mean, so easy. So I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. And it's nice that you actually have a foot switch for this. Okay. You hold it for bypass. Any foot switch gets you out of it. So we, you're in patch mode, which means right now you're just switching patches. You can also have the number in big and the name in small in the settings in display you can change that right now see not my thing i like it the other way so so you can quickly switch between five different presets go up a bank and you're now in bank two and so on and so on go down a bank we're back to one and in stomp mode now you can define what the five foot switches do. This is now tap. This will turn delay on and off. And this white, which is very white here on the uh, picture, is going to be a scene. That's a scene and that's also a scene. The scenes are different settings within the preset. If you switch AMP and all the algorithms from one to the other, there's probably a dropout. And to avoid that, within one preset, instead of going from preset to preset, within one preset, you can switch the drive on and off, the delay on and off. See it like your pedal board and AMP, just having different settings of that combination at your disposal. The, the quad cortex calls it a scene, the helix calls it uh, snapshots, different ways of talking about the same thing. You could have five different scenes here. How did you do this here? Okay. And yeah, when you click on this up here, you go from the effect chain, which right now has an in and an out. You could actually have two different chains because it got two inputs into your outputs. But then of course you're losing the length of the chain. Right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six here. And if I click on this, it's going to chain two, but it could also go to all outputs. And then I have a whole second one. Source is going to be not chain A. USB could be a source. Um, let's say input. You could have a whole second chain. You could have one chain for guitar, one for bass, one for acoustic guitar, one for electric at the same time, if you so chose. So let's go back because we didn't save that. There's my, my chain. So that's how you do that. Um, but just by clicking on the output, then you can see where it's going. All, all outputs, unbalanced, balanced in headphones, which is clearly a separate volume. 
um, effects sent, and so on. And then there's levels for that. So, but if you click on this, now we've got scene one, scene two, scene three. These are what the foot switches do. Let's say instead of tap tempo, I want something else. Oh, look how simple. I'm going to have to look over here. Now this is scene four. Done. You want to control all stomps and don't need scenes? Hold this in. Foot switch one will do... Drive. And my drive is right there. And now foot switch one will turn that on and off. No manual, just common sense. Hold something longer. EZ. So that's what you do up here. Uh, obviously, we could, talk, we could talk about MIDI and all that stuff forever. Uh, it has, I mean, let's go into this. In the back, two expression inputs, one and two, which I both have used up right now. You're going to find out why. There's the left input and right input. And the right input is actually XLR. It's a combo input. So you could run into it with an acoustic guitar if you so choose. There is a effect loop which we're going to get into. I have it wired to a uh, delay on the table. And we can actually integrate that into any chain. You could have a drive in there, a delay, anything you want, literally, uh, of your favorite. And you could also just go out into something and then back into something like an amp and blah, blah, blah. Um, how do we continue? Okay, there's um the unbalanced out and the balanced out, which, careful, has its own volume, as I find out. There's a ground lift switch. There's an aux input mini jack for jamming to your favorite stuff. And there's a phone's output. Again, that's the level that you set up here. And mini MIDI in and out, so you can completely control things. There is USB, of course, for uploading your own USB-C, for uploading your own IRs for the desktop editor. And there's a switch. Talking about desktop editor, I'm going to show you a picture of it right here. I'm not going to go into it because, A, this video isn't long enough. Uh, for that. Uh, and do you need that? With the touch screen, it's so intuitive that I'm saying you don't need a desktop editor. There's also a mobile app. I think I already downloaded that. Let's go to settings, Bluetooth, bam, turn Bluetooth audio. You could actually just stream audio to it. Or Control, both works. So jam with your favorite elevated jam tracks by Tom James. Right there with Bluetooth audio or download the app and edit it here. But why? I have a touch screen here and I'm touching things and I'm editing. I have a convenient touch screen right there. Editors are great. I don't think they're necessary with this piece of gear. Now we could play through lots of presets, which I will show you in a condensed section in a bit. But for now, we're just going to play around and I'm going to show you how to actually operate it. I have this Maybach Little Wing, absolutely amazing guitar, about 2200 bucks. <laughs> So we got a ping pong delay going on, probably a little bit much for that rock song. What would I do? I'm going to go to stomp. Stop. There we go. There's a scene. Super simple. Of course, there's a tuner. Oh, uh, have you noticed this thing up here shows you a myriad of things. Actually, right now it shows you input level. Or is it output level? I think it's output level. If I'm going to a setting right here, 
it's actually showing you in big what you're, it's showing you a, a, a copy of this, which is kind of nice. I have the Press 2 something. It's called the Impero 2 Press. It's rather small, she said. I, I don't think these lights do anything. I think they're when it has a tuner built in. It's passive, so no power supply. It has an output for expression and for foot switch. So there's a foot switch right there, which is actually very easily operated. It works as a wah and a volume or any kind of expression that you want. And in conjunction with this, it's actually rather convenient because it has an expression and a foot switch. So right now, see on top that it's orange and I'm clicking it. Now it turns blue and now also the strip on the right turns blue and that means it's volume. And let me show you. No, that's volume. And you want wah? Click. So with very little space on your pedal board, you have a an expression slash wah, that's born form of expression, and volume in one you can switch around. Pretty convenient. Let's go to another preset. I can click here. What bugs me is this doesn't actually control that list. Why? So you would control that list with your finger, H for hollow body. Do we see uh, epic distorted guitars? Pretty cool. I mean, there's so much visual feedback from that strip. It always kind of tells you what you're doing right now. You know, tap. And there's a very clear feedback. Nice. I love it. Let's say I don't want that delay. So right now we've got mix time feedback there at the bottom. And then we've got arrows to go left and right. Obviously in the desktop editor, you would see more of those at the same time. It doesn't really bother me too much. This is kind of like a this same idea that a Helix would have. This is ping pong right now. Bam. I can actually go to different ones. Let's do sweep. I love sweep delays.
if you wanted that uh, drives, there are the controls, pick a different drive. And you can, of course, pick that. And now I can, oh, wait, wait, here we go. Um, I can use the big dial instead of the drag, which I kind of like a bit more. Okay, that might be a bit much, so here's what we're going to do. Delay, turn, turn that off. Reverb, car, volume, drive. Let's turn that off. Let's go to amp. It says Marshall. So you see some of that are grayed out, probably because I've got too much stuff loaded. And empty out the preset a bit. And all of a sudden we can load higher processor intensive models. You can also do preamp and power amp separately. We're gonna go to the cab and check different cabs. You can of course load your own IRs. Why not? That would be not a cab, but an IR block. Brand new guitar, the uh, strings are still acting up a bit. Okay, and so on and so on. So let's add my delay. So instead of the delay block, or in front of the delay block, I'm adding drive, cab, modulation, reverb, effects, send and return. You could have these separately and actually go around internal effects if you wanted that. But I'm just doing a whole loop. And that's about it. It's mono. And uh, well, that, 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 that's all there is move it around, swap things, whatever you wanted. So now I just made some more space. So if I go here, I'm going to say this one is going to be my effects loop. Uh, you can also, of course, actually switch several things at once. So I could select more than one thing and it would turn them all on and off. We don't want that right here. So right here, that's where we are. I'm going to turn this off and actually the reverb off as well. So right now I can turn that effect loop on and off. Oh, I turned the cab off. We don't want that. Okay. It's behind the cab. I'm going to turn that on. And there's the Joshua from MXR, which is sitting on the table. And that's now part of my sound. Adjusting the volume a bit. There was a bit of phasing happening. There's a mix of it going in and out. I mean, it's going to run through ADDA. Let's see if we can get the mix all the way up and then take the mix on the Joshua down. That works nicely. If we go through each block and show you all the possibilities, it's ridiculous. You know there's all the 
uh, modulations and dynamics and amps and cabs and delays. Uh, it, it's a lot. I was just trying to find out why in the world can't I edit? Well, if you have to be kind of in the main scene because scene three, no editing, scene two, no editing. I'm in the main scene. Now I can edit again. So here's just the list of amps. Okay, that's a lot. That's just high gain. Clean. And the list is bigger than on the other models, which we're going to get into when we look at our comparison. Okay, there is a lot, I would even say too much. You don't need that much. It's ridiculous. But just to get you an overview, let's listen to presets. <laughs> Have I mentioned the lock button, which I think is pretty damn cool? Because now you can't actually change your sounds. You can just switch. It's great for live because nobody can, you know, mess or you can't accidentally mess with your settings. Unlock, done, go to stomp mode. You can totally do that. But this doesn't do anything. My two cents. At the price, I think it's 699 
you could get for a little bit cheaper you can get an hx stomp from line six that's a helix that's a good piece of gear there's no question about it sound wise in a similar league in and out wise not this has more stuff to offer in the back user interface wise the ampero kills it if you know what you're doing you know get get in there fiddle around with stuff it is so much easier than this tiny little thing i mean the helix you need the desktop editor here i don't care about the desktop editor i can easily put my sounds together in no time flat just with the interface that it offers pod go similar thing no i mean it's got you know it's got more stuff but it doesn't have all it doesn't have xlr out all that stuff and it has no touch screen and six is really behind on that so with the scenes and the stomp mode and the stomp mode being accessible here and the looper which we haven't even looked at um and i mean some drums but the loop that you can easily put your pedals into and a myriad of sounds and calves and ir capability i haven't checked out the more stuff which is you know a direct competition i haven't but for me right now this is the one a user interface is there now sounds is this going to be comparable comparable to like a fractal or a, a quad cortex no it is less than half the price it has a lot of functionality it does sound like a modeler it has that top fizzle the modeler has um it's not it's not a tube amp it replacement it is everything that the guitar world offers in a convenient box for a fair price with a great user interface for your feet or for your hands to make the sounds and then get to the sounds you're playing cover gigs nobody's gonna give a flying rat's ass that it sounds a tiny little bit not like a tube amp it doesn't matter as i said in other videos i've produced albums with james labrie from dream theater sebastian Bach from skid row um the guy from kansas steve walsh people from trans Siberian orchestra people from saga and you know what i used for those albums a pod two if your notes are right and you got the music nobody in the world is ever going to say oh you're playing an apero the sounds could be better no nobody's going to even know this is not top of the line when it comes to the tone i'm going to be super honest and they're paying me for this video but that is the honesty that we need but they're good they're better than the line before it i think they're as good as anything in that price range is and i love the hardware i was super blown away when i unboxed it and i love the interface that within an hour or two you can get to and easily find exactly what you need you need stomps good you need scenes good then you know up here pick which one bam i mean it's very very intuitive there's clearly things borrowed from the competition like the whole scene thing the way the layout is is kind of a little bit quad cortex quad cortexy uh, but i mean hey learn from the best this is a good piece of gear for the money no question about it so if you're in the market for something like this and that's your price point get the Imperator 2 stage. That's, that's all I can say. I put links below to all the shops that helps me if you use them. Thank you, Ari and Hotone, for supporting this video and, uh, you know, getting me a paycheck. That's nice. Uh, all the sounds you heard were the sounds that you heard. I couldn't fake that. Uh, and I'm not saying what I'm saying because I'm paid. I'm saying it because I truly believe this is a good piece of gear. Use the links and animals at the end. Yeah!